What's up, everybody? I'm back. Welcome to Live Fridays. This is my first Live Friday under my new brand, Toss and Spin, which I'm very, very excited about. Special shout out to Always Reppin' Athletics for the shirt. They make amazing gear. Their link will be in my bio. Head over and check them out as well. I couldn't be more excited to welcome in my guy, Zach Thomas. He has an amazing background. He is a USPTA certified professional. He played in college. He is a foot and ankle surgeon. And not to mention, he has a YouTube channel where he breaks down tennis shoes, which is obviously amazing. Give him a second. He's going to jump on and we're going to have a chat for a few minutes. Give it one second. What's up, man? Hey, Chris, how's it going? I'm good. How are you? Great. Living the dream? Oh, yeah, trying. Someone's dream. Yeah. Now, where are you located? Pittsburgh, PA. Okay, okay, okay. So you're on, uh, you're on Eastern Time. Yep. Nice, nice. Well, uh, thanks for jumping on. I really appreciate it. Welcome to Live Fridays, That's which is great. always a fun watch. thing to do. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, I, I started this uh, call it Live Friday journey to one, get to know people from different different backgrounds and all over the place. But two, just to learn about some amazing stories. And I saw some of your videos on your profile, especially with what you're doing with shoes. And so I thought it'd be cool to, to bring you on and, and learn a little bit more about what you're doing. Oh, great. Yeah, it'd be fun. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So I know you played tennis. I know you're a surgeon as well. Um, I know you, you do some cool things with shoes, but tell me a little bit about how you got into uh, tennis and this passion for becoming a surgeon that you have. I mean, I, I started playing when I was 15. My dad got me a job at the tennis center and near my house, and that kind of spurred that on. And then um, from my freshman to senior year of high school, my only concern was getting a college scholarship or playing tennis in college. And I ended up going to Slippery Rock University, which is in northern PA. And yeah. uh, when, when I was there, my coach, Matt Meredith, who's still the coach there, uh, they have, their men's team's no longer there, their women's team is. Um, and so he I asked if I wanted to get certified to teach while I was there because I was teaching in the summers uh, as my job at that point. And um, during that time, I thought I'm either going to go into medicine or I'm going to be a tennis instructor. And um, uh, I chose medicine. And uh, I wanted to be a foot and ankle doctor just because it's, it's interesting. You can do a lot of sports medicine. It's a little more low stress than, say, like a cardiac surgeon or something else like that. And yeah. uh, my goal always was to, tr was to be some sort of resource for tennis players. I wasn't good enough to get on the tour, obviously. And I didn't mm -hmm. think uh, in this area I was really good enough to break through as an instructor. Um, it, Pittsburgh isn't, you know, Boca Raton or Southern California, but yeah. – um, have a, a stable of world-class teaching professionals here that um, are just, you know, they're out. I mean, just it, it's a real mecca for tennis instruction here. And uh, so when I took a job in my hometown, I started playing back at the tennis center that I had grew up playing in, and I made all these connections. And then all of a sudden, five years later, 40, 50 percent of my practice is tennis players. And yeah, that's why I started the website because I was so sick of repeating myself. Every <laughs> In, in the uh, office telling people what to do and what shoes to get. And then someone came along and said, well, why is this tennis shoe the way it is? And this and that. And I said, oh, I'll cut one open. And then I put it on YouTube and the video got like, you know, 2000 views right away. And I said, well, I probably should start doing this more. And it's funny you said that because even I, I bought some new shoes the other day. And usually, at least for the last five years, I've always worn Wilson tennis shoes. But more, more importantly, I'm always looking at hey, the price point, I'm not necessarily thinking aesthetically how the shoe might feel when I move or I'm on the run or when I'm teaching. And I think it's the one of the most important purchases that you'll make, much like a tennis racket. And yeah. if you don't think through, you know, what type of shoes you'll wear, um, obviously it can have prolonged, you know, injuries for you, whether it's your knees, your back, or whatever it may be. Um, and I find it interesting that you cut shoes open. And I'm curious to know, do you have a brand that you, you look at and you say, hey, this brand does an amazing job with their shoes? Or is it based off the person? Is every person different? Um, 
so each so i don't know i mean it, I, I think about it like my wife thinks about the wineries she likes it, these small it, these the, the bigger wineries right they have all these wines that are really good then you get the smaller ones they make one good bottle of wine the rest of them are garbage right that, that's <laughs> that's how some of these shoe brands are they'll make one really amazing shoe then the rest of them are kind of eh. like if, if you look at adidas like the soul court boost is the best shoe I think that's ever been made for yeah. men's or women's tennis. But the, you know, some of their other ones are like their updates to the feather or, you know, just, eh, um, the, the Stycon is kind of a, a, a gimmick. The Stycon BOA is a really great shoe. If you look okay. at Nike up until last year, they made the Vapor 9, 9.5 or Vapor X. And right. that shoe I thought was phenomenal. And everything else I thought of Nike's was pretty much garbage and mm -hmm. then all of a sudden this year they got the vapor x the vapor x knit they have the gp turbos which i think is the second best shoe that's made right now um and for years like k swiss their shoes i thought were not really much better than paper mache and mm -hmm. then they <laughs> came out with their latest there are a couple of latest shoes the hyper quartz um mm -hmm. the express one the express two they're the two best shoes i think out there especially if you play on hard courts yeah um, and they're, I mean, I, I got a pair of them for $49 on Tennis Warehouse recently. And they're better than some of, you know, what ASICs makes that are 130 And not to, not to say ASICs is bad because ASICs Court FF2 and ASICs uh, Gel Resolution 8 are two of the best tennis shoes that I've played tested this year. But, you know, that it just goes to show you that you can have a smaller company make unbelievable shoes and then other companies – you know, they, they make one or two really good ones for a couple of years and their other models are and then, you know, other years, their models are great. It just it kind of yeah. depends on your foot type. And it's funny you mentioned that one thing I always think about, you know, we always think the price point or the higher the price point, the better the shoe. And you just said, like, hey, you could get a really good tennis shoe for 50 bucks. And that doesn't mean it's any not as good as a shoe that's 130 bucks. The New Balance, I think it's I think it's six it's nine six nine sixty nine or six nine six I think it's six nine six, has been I think hovering around fifty to seventy five dollars for the last two and a half years, mm -hmm. and I don't think there's a, a shoe now it's not as durable like yeah. you know it, let's take that versus the Vapor Cage fours it's not going to be as durable but if you know if if you're not playing five O level tennis or if you're playing mostly doubles then. I'd probably steer you more toward the New Balance. They're going to be wider, more comfortable. The tread's a little bit easier on the foot. Their midsoles yeah. are better. I mean, that, that's, I mean, that's the shoe I played with for years was that New Balance because that was really – because I have a really wide foot. And that was really the only shoe that fit me. Now a lot of more companies are making wider shoes, and, and they're making them with a bigger toe box. Um, but for a while, I mean, I'd just buy the cheap New Balance. I'd buy my dad the cheap New Balance because he's <laughs> next player too. And him and I have been yeah. using these, you know. And he'd be out there whooping up on people that were wearing shoes three times more expensive than he does. So, I mean, it, the price does not matter all the time. Okay. And then in terms of, you know, one of the things I'm always like thinking through is just when you're cutting the shoe open, exactly. Like, what are you looking for as you cut it open? Are you looking for a certain key characteristics yeah. as, as you look into? So. Uh... No, go ahead. Uh, so yeah, sorry, you just uh, went a little bit. We broke um, up, yeah. So, no, yeah. So what I'm looking at typically is what, how is it comparing to what I noticed on the court? So number one is the upper durability. Is it going mm -hmm. to burn through pretty quick? So that's why I always put my Dremel on the upper because there's some uppers that literally just goes right through. Mm -hmm. The next is how many layers is the upper and how much padding is in the upper because that's going to tell me, you know, is it going to be more comfortable? Or is it going to burn out pretty quick when you're playing in them? Yeah. The next thing that a lot of people don't really look at is how far does the heel counter, the really the, the plastic in the heel, how far up the shoe does that go? Because some shoes will literally just put it in the heel. And if that plastic doesn't extend all the way into the midfoot of the shoe, the heel's going to break down over time, and that's how you're going to sprain your ankle. Mm. So that's one of the biggest things I look at. The next thing I look at is usually when I cut the shoe in half from back to front is, is there really a shank in the shoe that's holding it together? Or is it, did they go cheap? Did they kind of cut corners and just put like a real little piece of thin film in there? Or is it actually something substantial holding that shoe up? 
Because if it's just a little thin piece of garbage in there, the, the, the shoe's going to burn out really quick. I mean, you're, you're going to end up breaking through the shoe and you'll end up with heel pain, yeah. um, arch pain, maybe a little bit of um, posterior tegal tendonitis, which is like black foot pain. Yeah. Um, and, and so that's kind of what I'm looking at. And then all, obviously I'm putting the Dremel on the outsole to see if those six month durability guarantees um, really mean anything. Uh, because I think some, some companies sometimes they'll put that durability guarantee on there thinking no one's going to call them. Yeah. about it uh recently i have not noticed one shoe that's been that, that has had a bad durability test on it um but that's kind of what i'm looking for i'm looking for more how this shoe is going to wear over time mm -hmm. um most of these shoes if you only wear them twice they're going to be felt they'll be fine you know but it's just over time are these things going to wear down on you to the point where you're going to end up in my office after two like a month in them or two weeks in them saying like, why, why am I having such a hard time? Why is my heel hurting me? Uh, I've only had these shoes for two weeks. So that's why. Right. Yeah, no. And I think about myself is you, you switch brands, you switch shoes and all of a sudden my Achilles is hurting or my knees is hurting. Like you said, my back is hurting and you don't think, well, maybe it's, I'm not stretching enough, but I'm sure it has a lot to do with what's going on with well, what I have on my feet. And also just, I mean, just recently in the last couple of years, it's mostly Nike, but I've seen New Balance and Asics start jumping on this train where they are all of a sudden getting away from a traditional closure in the shoe and they want to go with slipper tongue, two piece tongue on the Vapor Cage 4s, which is, the, I, I mean, I don't know why anybody would ever want that. But yeah. when people are getting numbness in their toes or their feet are going to, their feet are starting to cramp or the tongue is wearing out because you can't make them thicker if it's a, a slipper, the tongue is really thin. And so they're burning out, they're burning their shoes out really quick. And they're wondering, well, why am I buying shoes quicker? And if it's not broke, don't fix it. So typically, unless you really like that kind of closure, um, typically I say go with more of the, the three piece, the court FF twos, the Novaks, um, th that, that, that's actually a pretty good design they have, but they'll still burn out faster than a three piece tongue. So that's another thing I kind of look at is, is the tongue closure. Cause people don't pay attention to that, but that is a pretty important part of the shoe too. And just like your, your YouTube page, like there's a true science behind the tennis shoe. And I think of it like the racket. Uh, during my Wilson days, you have the racket that's on the shelf, but a lot of pros sometimes play with slight modifications to the racket, weights, grips, and things like that. And I'm not sure if you've seen this or you know this, but you know when you think of like a pro shoe, what they're wearing on their feet, do you think they, they've made slight modifications to the shoe and there's been extensive testing done? Or, I mean, they're obviously not oh, of going course. So, yeah. So, oh, of course. Um, they're they're not they're not playing with the shoes you're playing with. Um, right. Well, right. they are. But put it that way. The 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 materials are exactly the same. The yeah. tread is the same. Um, but the last of the shoe is not. What what that is uh, is when they mold the shoe, they're actually taking like Federer, Serena's, and the dolls. They're taking a plaster cast of their shoe. And that's what they're making the shape of the shoe with. So mm -hmm. if you look at, um, I mean, really good example is Federer. Federer has yep. a wider foot than I do. And then that's a wide okay. foot. Yeah. So <laughs> if, if you look at his shoes up close, the flange mm -hmm. on the outside of his shoe, like kind of where the outside toe box is on his shoe, it's as wide as a monster truck. Whereas wow. if you look at the Vapor X, it's not all that wide up until they came out with the Vapor, well, the Vapor line. When they came out with the Vapor 10, which is the Vapor X, I call it, they've made it wider, which I, which I think they started getting more toward Federer's uh, foot type. But if you look at most Nike shoes and you look at Federer's shoes, his is unbelievably wider. If you look at Nadal's shoes, the mm -hmm. toe box in his shoes, I mean, it looks like, it looks like a, a spade. It's super wide on both sides. It's kind of big. Whereas on the on the Vapor Cage shoes lineup now, the Vapor Cage fours, that they, they're more of an inflared last. Whereas his is more of just a bulbous wide last. So when they're making those shoes, they are sewing the shoe to his foot type. And if you look at some of my teardown videos, I always show the last of the shoe and how mm -hmm. it's it's inflared and what the shape of it is. And when they're making it for you and me, they're making a pretty generic last, just kind of, usually it's slightly inflared unless it's the um, Adidas Stycon, which is a straight last, which is why I like, which is the one thing I really like about that shoe. It's yeah. straight, which fits more foot. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, if you're an elite professional, they're making the last 
to their to their foot. And so what that does is that allows them when they go to tournaments, it takes them 15 minutes to break in a pair of shoes. Whereas if Federer had to play with the stock Vapor 10 or the stock Vapor 9.5, he'd be a bloody mess by the, by, mm. by the end of its life um, before he actually broke it in. Whereas if he has a shoe that's his, uh, his last and his custom shoe, he's able to break that shoe and therefore he can travel with 20 shoes and always have a fresh pair. And that's why those guys like that. And, and like, um, right now I'm actually bidding on, I'm auctioning a pair of Serena's shoes. Okay. So I try to compare those to the stock version. Cause I, I'm just, I'm just looking at them online and I can see already the difference in her pair versus uh, the stock. So that's why they do that. And my wife and I, we were just watching the match and we were commenting on her shoes cause she's playing. She was, or is playing Shelby Rogers right now. And I was thinking to myself, like, I wonder how those shoes are actually different from the stock version, right? And of course, I know common sense tells me they are different. Same mm -hmm. thing with rackets, but I wonder where those small, minute differences are. And then to your point of breaking shoes in in 15 minutes, like, that's one thing I didn't know of, right? When I got a new pair of shoes, I needed to play with them that week, get acclimated to them. And then, you know, we got a match or a college match on the weekend, I could play in them, but I wasn't bringing out a new pair of shoes on match day because I would feel very silly on the tennis court. If you, I mean, I, that, that's one of the biggest things when I do the play test of the shoes, I always say exactly how long they took me to break in because there are some shoes that I really like that just take me a while to break in. But after I break them in, they're great. Like the Onyx Eclipse and threes, mm -hmm. they took me two weeks to break in because they're, they're a little more narrow. But once I did, they were one of my favorite shoes. Whereas like the, the GP, the Nike GP turbos, they felt good in 20 seconds. Um, it, it just, it really depends. Now, sometimes if a shoe is really quick to break in, that also means it's going to be a little softer, which also means it's not going to be as supportive. That's not the case of the GP turbos. The GP turbo is just a really well engineered shoe, but like the vapor cage fours, they broke in pretty quick, mm -hmm. but the upper is so soft. I mean, it's, it's like wearing like a, a Jersey on your foot. So <laughs> sometimes it's not going to be as, um, it's, it's just not going to be as, as supportive. Um, but you know, if, if the last of the shoe is made to your foot, you usually can just bring them out and play. Um, mm -hmm. But, like, if you look at the A6 Court FF, the Novak, that's his shoe. I mean, he designed that shoe for him. He designed it based off the barricade. Um, yeah. But still, his shoe, even though he designed that shoe that says the Court FF2 Novak, it's still his foot that, that shoe is made from. All the materials are the same. The tread's the same. The midsole's the same. But the shape of it is just a little different and that's what it is it's not like it's not like tennis rackets where andy murray is still playing with the old head pro tour yeah. not the radical right? yeah. yeah they're playing with that shoe it's just the last of the shoe is different that's all yeah now that that makes total sense and yeah. believe me i know all about the the racket side of the business and how you know hey you got to update the cosmetic but under the hood just like a car there's a lot of different things going on and a yeah. lot of Think of Nadal, you know, his racket is probably 15 years old. It may be the original, um, the original racket he's always played with, but I know for a fact it's, it's pretty old with a nice paint job. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, um, as we, as we close things off and this is super helpful, not only for me, but people who will see this video, like, where do you, where do you see your, you, you know, this, this, this business of yours kind of going in the next three to five years? Because I think, one, just listening to you talk, there's so much information you have to give. Um, and I'm just curious how you continue to evolve yourself as you think of, you know, moving forward in the future. Well, it's interesting because this, like, the whole tennis pro doc thing has kind of changed. And, you know, it's, I think it's about a year and a half old now that I've been doing this. Um, and it, it went from, I'm just going to start, I'm going to make this website just for my patient. Um, you know, it's my patients and, and that's it. And then it went to Instagram. I started putting that stuff on there and I started meeting people like you and yes. Gavin and Javier uh, from tennis, this, uh, com and, and all these people, you know, these people I've become friends with now online, like all my online friends. And uh, <laughs> so I started doing that more and I started getting a lot out of that. And then, um, you know, just in the last two months I started doing uh, YouTube and now that's, you know, I, you know, I went from, you know, zero now, I'm, you know, 300 people come in, you know, or, watching my videos and I got like 2,200 views on me cutting the, 
Nike GP turbos in half. So, yeah. you know, all of a sudden, you know, the tennis pro doc thing, I'm shifting more toward like YouTube now and that's become interesting. And, uh, it's, I think it's just going to be, you know, I, I, I've completed a lot of the goals that I've wanted already. And that is to be a foot doctor to tennis players. And then that's kind of was my ultimate goal. And now it's just kind of maybe, I don't know, kind of getting in touch with my more creative side and trying to see what kind of creative things I can do to help people out more because I do think sometimes there, you can pull the rug over people's head when it comes to tennis equipment and there is a lot of marketing that goes along with it. Um, and so it, it is nice that people can get a objective, more scientific uh, approach to what they're doing. Cause I do know that I, and this, it happens more with runners in my practice that they think cause they buy the Nike vapor next percents, the one or the uh, vapor flies or whatever, the one that uh, Kipchoge was play was running in and yep. broke the marathon record and that they are going to be good in that shoe or really they need the $60 new balance nine forties because they just have seen marketing on that shoe so much. Or they're, they're running in the Nike space hippie, which is a, a comfort shoe. I mean, that's, you know, no one should ever be running in that shoe. And so, <laughs> I, I think I think it's just it's good to spread awareness that there is science behind this stuff and there is real engineering behind these shoes and not every shoe is good for every person just because Coco Goff is playing in that shoe, which Coco Goff is playing in a forty nine dollar pair of shoes by the way, and mm -hmm. she's beating the hell out of everybody right now. <laughs> so yep, you know, but just because a shoe is good for her doesn't mean it's good for you and, and vice versa. <laughs> so I I think getting to that more just getting to trying to just give people a more scientific resource it before they buy something is is kind of where I, I think i see this going more yeah no and i mean one i think there's a huge need for that um because people i mean we're buying things off amazon we're reading reviews but those reviews while they may be good may not be relevant to my feet right or if i'm going to buy a new tennis racket that may not be relevant to my game so i definitely think there's a huge need for for what you're doing and I'm, I'm excited to see how it continues to evolve because um, again I was watching your videos trying to figure out what what shoe should I get based off my foot type right, um, right. And it was a pair of Adidas the Adidas boost and they feel pretty good um, and they're lightweight and I move well and I think they suit me pretty well but I'm curious to know was that the best choice for me you know what I mean and um, I think only time will tell right yeah I mean that's the other thing it's trial and error you know, right. like I, I wanted, I wanted to, in high school, I wanted to like the Reebok Fig Jams, which were Andy Roddick shoes yep. in the worst way. Those shoes are awful. Yeah. I mean, like, at least for me, I mean, they, they bend in the wrong areas. Now I had 10 pairs of them. I saved up all the money that I did from cleaning clay courts because I just wanted to wear them around. But when it actually came time to play a match, I'd take them off and put on my Adidas barricades because they, you know, they, they work better. And, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's just funny because, you know, you sometimes you want to like a shoe so bad and, you know, they're just not for you. Yeah. You know? Same and with I'm... the tennis racket. Like, <laughs> yeah. I like I wanted to play with the Babolat Pure Drive because Andy Roddick was playing with it and, you know, yeah. just couldn't do it. it. Didn't suit my game. I had to go back to the Flex Point Radical, you know. Same thing now. Everybody wants to play with the Black Pro Staff, right? But um, that, that not, Black Pro gonna... Staff is not easy to play with. No, no. I mean, it suits, you know, 5% of the market, not even that. Yeah. So the ultra or another Wilson racket, in my opinion, would be better for you. But everybody wants to be cool. They want to wear what Fed wears. They want to play with what he plays with. But you got to think holistically, like, what's actually good for you. Right. Yeah. yeah absolutely. 100%. No. Man, so honestly, this has been super informative and helpful. Um, I'm definitely going to share this after. But I just wanted to say thank you for taking the time to jump on. No, thanks uh, for having Friday. me. Yeah, and uh, I look forward to staying in touch and see, seeing what happens. Yeah, hopefully I have some uh, good – hopefully they come up with some new shoes in 2021 that I can uh, destroy for you. Yeah, no, I'm looking forward <laughs> to it, especially the Nike ones that you're bidding on. Oh, yeah, I, uh, I'm going to get them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't pay too much. Yeah, well, tell my wife that. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Well, thanks again, and um, have a good Friday. I'll talk to you yeah. soon. Yeah, see you. Right. See you.